Well, there was already a ton of hype, Rod, on this new look Rams team. Now that hype may just shoot through the the roof here at SoFi Stadium. Let's flip it over to the Chicago Bears, though. Two quarterbacks we saw tonight, Justin Fields, Andy Dalton. Where should that quarterback room go from here? Andy Dalton is a solid player. I mean, he's a solid, whether he's a starting quarterback or if he's a backup, he's solid. But it's nothing special about him. And if the Bears not just want to get to the playoffs, if they want to go far in the playoffs, they need something special at the quarterback position. And I say Justin Fields. And you saw when he came in, he's not afraid. The stage isn't too big for him. He came in in the first series, and he threw like an eight-yard out route. And then they took him back out of the game. So. I just I don't agree with Matt Nagy. I think Andy Dalton is a, a solid quarterback, but if you really want to go to that next level, you need to put Justin Fields in and just give him this experience, give him that opportunity. Chris Sims, where would you go with this quarterback room? Listen, I, I'm uh, Jack. I think you've heard me say this before. I'm a little bit like Rodney, or maybe even Coach Dungy, who, who talked about it in Football Night in America. I, I believe in Justin Fields as well. You know, again, we've seen this Bears offense with an Andy Dalton type quarterback. 38, compl 38 pass attempts tonight, 206 yards. That's just not going to scare defenses. There's no explosive element like Rodney's talking about or specialness that he can bring to the offense. And, you know, the one thing about Fields, of course, is, yeah, the, brights, the lights aren't too bright for him, but he's got big playability, and you saw how the team got excited. Hey, Andy Dalton right here, yeah, he's going to do all the right things with the ball. We understand that. He understands how to run the offense. He's not going to make big mistakes. Okay, big whoopee. What, who cares if Justin Fields comes in and makes a mistake here and there? He's also going to make 10 other plays that Andy Dalton won't be capable of making. I think that's what we're missing. And then, you know, we talk about, oh, you know, the Bears offensive line and we don't want to put anybody. Well, listen, if you're playing defense against the Bears, you know where Andy Dalton's going to be. He's going to be five yards behind the center. You know, with, with Justin Fields, there's a million things you got to worry about. You got to worry about him keeping the ball in a quarterback design run, the read option, the RPOs, and then, of course, his ability to scramble and make plays like that. So I am one that thinks I'd rather see Justin Fields here sooner rather than later. And I don't know, hey, guys, did it jump out to you when Justin Fields scored that touchdown, just how excited the Bears sideline and team got when he ran in for that one, ends, uh, that one rushing touchdown? Absolutely, and, and I'll tell you this, Chris, the players aren't stupid. They know when yeah. they want a player and they, uh, they feel like a player can make plays, they want that guy in. Of course, they're not going to go publicly and criticize their head coach, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm concerned about this defense a little bit. Is, is there anything to that patience as we check out some Justin Fields play from tonight? Is there anything to that patience in terms of just kind of getting his feet wet here, slowly easing him into the NFL life, or should they just go all in on Justin Fields? I just, I just tell you this. I don't know any other coach general manager that can get away with what uh, Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace got away with, picking Trubisky, blowing that, and coming back, signing Andy Dalton, giving him the job, right. and not playing Justin Fields. I, I just think it's absolutely crazy. And what are you, what are you trying to prove? Like. Justin Fields should be the starter. I, I don't know how tough it is. Like, how hard is it? How much, how difficult is it? Mm -hmm. Because you promised a guy a job. I just don't like it. I don't think it's right. Rod, flip it over to the Bears defensively. What is it going to take for them to get back to their feared ways on the defensive side of the ball? Well, first, they got to take care of their players. They got to take care of Akeem Hicks. He's unhappy that he doesn't have his contract. You look at a guy, they open up the checkbook for Khalil Mack. He's been good. He hasn't been great. And then Eddie Jackson, this is a guy, kid that's making $13 million. He was a first-team All-Pro, and he gets beat on one of the first series plays for a touchdown. He doesn't even tag the guy. So I just I look at the new defense coordinator, Sean Desai, and I just think that, you know, eventually he's going to have to make a move at a certain position. We saw some Aaron Donald. We saw Donald in the backfield a bit. Khalil Mack, your take on his performance tonight, what did you see? Well, Khalil is a hard worker, and he's, you know, pressures, and a lot of times you can't say, okay, well, he doesn't have 10 double-digit sacks. He's constantly putting pressure, and all his teammates come out and they say, hey, this dude is a dog, he's tough, he's really the leader. But at the end of the day, you get paid $20 million a year to put up numbers. He's working hard, he's just got to get to the quarterback. How about Cole Komet, this tight end? Because we had an eye on him. You're really thinking you need some tight end presence. He was at the man, University at, of Notre man, Dame. let me tell you something. I looked at this Just dude. Say. He is huge. huge. He can run, but he's timid. He like, is. Man, he's a big dude. Like, you should be running those little DBs over. I, I just, I think the more reps he gets, and they're trying to feed him. They want to feed him. And matter of fact, it was a fourth down and four, the one we just talked about with Jalen Ramsey. He was wide open, and Andy Dalton didn't trust him to throw him the ball. 
He just needs to play with a lot more confidence. Is Coach Nagy an offensive coach? And every year you're thinking at some point the offense has to explode, right? In his, in his time with the Bears, the offense has to go do their thing. What's it going to take for their offense to finally go do the thing that he was brought here to do? Well, maybe stop Matt Nagy from calling the plays. I wow. think first and foremost. I mean, because this offense, he's supposed to be an offensive genius, and I, I don't see anything. I don't see anything that makes me say, Chris, I don't see anything that makes me say, wow, Matt Nagy is a great offensive play caller. He's really putting his, uh, uh, his guys in a position to have success, or he's really putting a lot of pressure on the defense. I don't know what it is. I mean, you play quarterback. What do you think about their offense, No, Chris? I agree. There, you make a great point. There's no identity with the Bears offense. You, you watch the game sometimes, and you go, I'm not sure exactly – what they're trying to accomplish here or make the defense defend to then now they can play something off off of that, whatever that is. We know like McVay, they're going to run the ball, right? And they're going to run the ball, but then they're going to use the play action pass and the speed sweeps and then screens off of those play action fakes and everything like that. With the Chicago Bears, it's hard to tell. And then let alone the drop back pass offense. I think the thing that bothered me more than anything tonight was, listen, I know, you know, the Rams are a talented defense. But you got to do something at some point to scare the Rams defense. Man, they got to play downhill in the secondary, the back seven, all game long. Every throw was a five-yard throw into a tight window. And it's hard to play quarterback like that. It's hard to create big plays like that. And that's where I end up always going back to the Justin Fields conversation just because I think, honestly, he gives them the, he's the greatest schematical advantage they have, just like we saw in the touchdown run. You know, they don't have a guy like that. He's a special runner. So I don't know where this goes. Uh, I know the Bears fans in Chicago are going to be calling for Justin Fields. But, yeah, I worry about this Bears offense 100%. I'm with you, Rodney. Well, let's take a second, Rod. Let's hear from Coach Nagy after the loss. Here's what he had to say. To the way you deployed Justin Fields tonight with that mm -hmm. As the game was unfolding, what ended up limiting him to five snaps, which is what I think it was. Yeah, um, it was hard to tell if we knew exactly how many snaps he was going to get. But again, once you once you get behind like we did, uh, and you get back a few scores, that's when you, you get more into the the two minute mode. That's probably why there was a little bit less. Um, but who knows? You know, I think that for him, the times that he got in there, that he did well. And, you know, being his first game, and uh, Andy, Andy did a good job, too, of helping extend some of those drives and us going through that whole deal of how it's going to go. But uh, we'll continue to, to keep growing with that stuff and see what we want to do uh, with that. But uh, in the end, I thought, and again, I go back to that touchdown run. I mean, Justin did a, a great job. And then early in the game on the first throw, too, you know. So um, the film, going back and just watching the film in general, regardless of Justin or Andy, just in general to see where we were. I thought we got the run game going pretty good, which was good. But um, we got to use this to grow. And we got to stay positive. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.